welcome everyone to our National Intern Day webinar, America's Next Top Intern. We are so excited to dive into all the topics we have today about how to crush it in your internships this summer. I'm Jade, and I'm an employer branding specialist at WayUp, and I'll be co-hosting today's event with my colleague, Sean, a digital man marketing manager here at WayUp. So today we are joined by three amazing panelists. First up is Hannah Bergoon, a campus sourcing recruiter, supervising associate at EY. Annie Roden, a lead recruiter in university relations and talent acquisition at Lumen. And Alexandra Gonzalez Riveras, an enterprise intern experience specialist at Boeing. And now I'm gonna pass it on to my colleague, Sean, to get things rolling. Thanks so much, Jade. I'm Sean, as Jade said, I'm a digital marketing manager here at WayUp, and I'm super excited to be here with everybody today. Shout out to everybody from New York, by the way, that's where I'm calling in from. Um, so what we're going to start off with first is just talking about what you can do to prepare for your internship before it actually starts. So one big thing to consider is that before you actually start your internship, you might have multiple offers. I think we've all been there before where we're debating between two different things and both candidates and employers are dealing with this all the time. Luckily, there's a professional and right way to navigate this, um, accept an offer, reject an offer, or actually back out of an offer. So Annie, if we could start with you, do you have any, any advice on this topic? Hi, of course, thank you so much. Um, I think the biggest thing is um, integrity and being ethical. Um, so when you are, you have multiple offers on the table, um, I think at the end of the day, the recruiter that is assisting you with those offers, they want what's best for you. So if you have to come back and decline an offer because it doesn't fit your uh, long-term goals or maybe just the, the short-term goals of what you're wanting to experience during an internship, um, that recruiter is going to be absolutely supportive um, and understanding and appreciate the honesty that it's just not the right fit for you personally. Um, my biggest um, drive home here is if you have multiple offers on the table, and I see this quite often, both um, in-house and just from knowing other recruiters in the industry, um, if you have multiple offers on the table, a candidate will accept all of them and then come back and uh, rescind an offer. Not, decline, not come back and decline an offer, but come back and rescind an offer. And that puts the company in a bad predicament because a lot of times, especially if you're waiting to the last minute, um, that that work team who invested in you, believed in you, wanted to work with you, now will go without an intern. So I think at the end of the day, you just need to think of moral code here, ethical, being an ethical person. Um, and when you make a commitment to a company, you should see that through. Yeah, such a good point and just a good way to start your career professionally. Um, so moving right on to the next question here, um, you know, first impressions are super important. Um, there's there's work you can do beforehand to actually put yourself in a position where, um, you know, you're making the right first impression on day one of your internship. Um, Hannah, you want to get started on just letting us know some of the tips that you've seen where interns can make a good first impression? Sure. So I think one of them is just being ready to soak in a lot of new information and all of those great first day feelings. So we always talk about at EY how it's great when interns can be a sponge and soak up as much information as they can during their internship. And I would just encourage you all to really dive in head first. We don't expect you to know everything. We actually don't expect you to know anything, right? That's why you're in the internship. You're there to learn and to grow. And there will be a lot of firsts and a lot of new things when you're at your internship. There's gonna be new people, new processes. You're gonna be commuting or driving a new route to work, meeting um, new clients for the first time, filling out tons of onboarding paperwork and working with new programs on your computer, all the things. Um, you will probably get a little bit overwhelmed and that's okay. Just stick with it, keep going. You will have so many supportive people around you that will help guide you and answer questions um, You know, from your first day and beyond. And I know we're going to talk about building those relationships later on, but those are just a few thoughts. It's awesome. Um, Annie, any um, tips on research that the interns can do before the internship actually starts that could help them make a good first impression? Yes, absolutely. Navigate your technologies. 
Um, review the company website, make sure you understand the mission, the culture, the values of the company. Um, all of that information should be across the board for any company online. Um, other things you can do, connect at, with the recruiter that you're working with on their socials. They post a lot um, about the company, what's going on. Um, once you get more acquainted with who your work team is, um, after selection, obviously, connect with people on socials too. That's a great way to, um, one, just connect with them, learn about the work team, learn about the work project, but it's a great way to really um, leverage the resources at your fingertips ahead of time to be proactive in understanding what the company does. Um, YouTube is another great place. Most companies, I know Lumen has a great YouTube channel. Um, go on and watch those videos. I know I retain stuff a lot better doing those short little one, two minute videos. Um, so that's another great place to um, go visit and learn the most you can prior to starting with the company. Um, you can also always lean on your recruiter. Again, we're here to support you. We want you to feel ready, be prepared. Um, so come back to us, ask questions. Um, that's the best way to put the best foot forward. It's throwing me back to my my first internship now. Um, and I think you both touched on it. You know, part of the internship is making connections, you know, making friends even, and just making sure you feel comfortable. Um, and I think a lot of interns are nervous day one. Obviously, it's pretty... Um, it's a new situation. So what are the best ways that you could kind of set yourself up for a good experience and make sure you're making good connections, especially before the internship starts? Um, Alexandra, we'll start with you. Yeah. Um, well, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you all. Shout out to everyone from Florida and from Puerto Rico. So I'm from Puerto Rico. So, woo -woo. Um, so how to address looking for that um, friends and connections prior to joining to the internship and, and when you join too. Um, before that, the best way um, your company might offer um, chats or welcome calls or onboarding calls that you're able to see and talk and chat with interns that are within either your same location or in that organization. So um, use your socials. LinkedIn is one of the best places to connect with them or when you do post, search for those hashtags and um, locate interns that will be um, at your organization and just look forward to connect with them. The best way is to just get started. Um, sending that initial message and just say, hi, I will be an intern at XYZ company. I would love to connect with you. Um, I think that's great. Um, as you meet with people from your company, like we do connect with our interns before that, just connect with us on social media. We'll be able to um, help you and guide you and share information about organization that it's available to you and help you connect with the people that you want to. Um, when you join your company um, at Boeing, we do um, encourage managers to assign what we call our intern buddies, which is someone within your team that will help guide you. Um, but use that connection and use your team and use your manager, your small network to um, connect with people that are within either your same interest, which is it might be something personal, sport teams, universities, um, also within your work-related interests. So if it's um, if you're in engineering or if you're in HR, or if you're in business, whatever function it is, and you just want to learn around what other interns are doing or other teams are doing, be very vocal about that and ask um, your managers, your teams to help you with that. I bet I've never met anyone that would say no to just sharing a network connection with you. So that is just a great way to get started. That's some good advice there for sure. Um, our next question revolves around being in the office or being remote. You know, the world is so different right now. Uh, some people have a remote internship, some are hybrid, some are totally in the office. So let's start off with the, you know, basics of what do you even wear to work these days? Does it differ between if you're going in the office, if you're being remote? And then let's say if you're remote, uh, you know, how do you make sure your equipment is all set up and that you're ready to go day one? I think we can all take this question because you know, everybody has a different situation at their company. So whoever wants to start can kind of kick us off. I can go ahead and kick it off, Sean. Um, so Lumen personally has all three of those options, fully remote, hybrid capacity. So working a couple of days in office, a few days at home or fully in office. It depends on the position. Um, majority of our interns, I would say in the upper 90% are fully remote that you are, you are in my home right now. Um, so for me, my dress attire absolutely does um, 
fluctuate. So I'm wearing a nice, a nicer top, but I got yoga pants on. So um, obviously in the remote capacity, you can be flexible with your bottom half. Um, but this is a topic that definitely you should speak to your manager and work team about. Um, at Lumen, we have the philosophy for dress for your job. So those who are not um, customer facing are working more IT backend, um, they don't need to technically dress up, even if they're going in um, at a hybrid capacity in office. But that's guidance that you should receive from your manager and work team. Um, but dress for your job is the philosophy here. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Awesome. Yeah, for Alexandra, maybe if you want to go next. Yeah, sure. So um, same uh, with Boeing, we do offer three capacities. Um, although majority of the interns are on site or on a hybrid schedule, we do offer that remote opportunities too. Um, but I would say uh, we do follow that same philosophy. Um, it depends on um, what your job you know, it's related to, I would say one of the biggest things, because um, we are a big manufacturing company, is that, you know, there might be a special wear that you might have to um, or need, depending on your on your company. So it's just very important that you go to your manager or anyone that is supporting you um, in that onboarding journey and ask about, you know, what is the correct um, business attire? Because some of your jobs might have already expectations and usually onboarding specialists and um, we share that information with you ahead of time um, as needed but it's a great question it's it's a small simple question and it's just um, better to know ahead of time for sure and Hannah will we'll end it with you okay awesome I feel like we've kind of covered the clothing attire aspect so I can kind of maybe give some tips and tricks for remote versus in person if that's okay um, at EY specifically, our whole onboarding process is remote. So like the first week of your internship is fully virtual and interns are typically sort of excited and, you know, ready to get started um, with their first week, which is great. So we have good participation from them and good engagement, which I think is important since you don't have that sort of in-person um, atmosphere. It's good to just, you know, show up what you guys are doing in the chat. I love that you're putting in your LinkedIn and all of that. You're really engaged right now, which is awesome. So kind of channel that into your internship. And I think most recruiters would um, say this about their onboarding process as well, but just be timely with any sort of onboarding first day tasks that you're given. Getting those action items done in a quick and timely manner goes a long way and sets you up for success later on in your internship as well. So set up your computer, all of your technology equipment before the first day, follow all those instructions and any emails you get, um, attend and be on time for all of your calls and trainings and all those things. Um, all of that is just so helpful and will get you started off on the right foot. Um, and then obviously that positive attitude and um, everything is so important as well. Outside of the onboarding aspect though, our internship is more of like a hybrid setup. So I know that the other two ladies have talked about this as well. Um, we want our interns to have as much of an in-person experience as they can. So they'll have like social activities, office visits that are all in person. But when it comes to their client engagement work, it does vary depending on the team that they're on. So depending on the service line or the specific client that they're working on, they could work at home one day and then the rest of the four days are at the client site or some teams work two days in the office, one day at home and the rest is at the client site. So it really differs, but you'll just have to be ready and willing to kind of go wherever your team is going um, because we really are sort of like a team unit at EY. Um, obviously you guys know this, but being in person allows you to have that teaming aspect that can be a little bit lacking in remote work. So I would just encourage you guys to find ways that even when you are working remote to have those um, touch points with your teammates or your fellow interns or your managers so that you can keep building relationships and checking in on the tasks that you're assigned and keeping up with all of your work and those things. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, the big thing that we keep hearing here is just ask questions. You know, it's okay to ask questions. There's a lot that you know, people are curious about. Um, and I think asking questions and the right questions before an internship starts is key. Uh, what are some good questions that interns can ask their hiring managers or their intern program leads before the internship actually starts that kind of just makes it feel like they're ready and willing to pay attention and do the prep work beforehand? 
Um, I think a good piece of advice is just, you know, no questions could sometimes be a bad thing, right? So for example, do you ask what time do I log on? Is, you know, there's something I should know in terms of morning standups if we're doing remote work. Um, Alexandra, your thoughts on some good questions you've seen interns ask? Yes, and um, I agree. No, there's no bad questions. Um, the best way it's just to get clarity on what are your expectations on those first days of your internship. Um, I would say, you know, those first few weeks at your internship will go really, really fast. And so um, the better prepared you are with questions for your managers and your teams, it's great to just get started. Um, one thing that we've seen is connecting with your manager ahead of time and asking them about what the statement of work looks like and what are those skills that you might need to be prepared for or research prior to just joining in. Um, this will, you know, help you get clarity on what are the expectations from your manager when you just joined um, their team, how the team operates, um, what pre-reads you can do ahead um, to get ready for questions and just dive in when you just join that internship. I would say another great question is just understanding what your managers um, and team dynamics are, because you want to make sure to understand their communication style and um, understand what are their just their team dynamics. So this will help you integrate, collaborate, partner with your team. Um, this will help you, as we've talked about, with you, <laughs> build your network, um, ask for help which is um, certainly super important while you are doing your internship. Again, no back questions. And I know this is gonna sound silly, but don't shy away from just asking personal questions to your manager. What is their professional career look like? Um, what is their favorite sports team? What is their favorite um, food? Best thing about the company? Because you know we are humans after all, and we don't wanna shy away from just personal interactions. Um, that's very important. So you can start building that relationships with them. Um, so oh, that's, those yeah. are my suggestions. I don't know if anyone else has anything else. <laughs> I mean, those are great. Um, and like you said, we're all humans. That kind of leads me into the next the next point here. Mistakes. We all make them, aside from me, of course. I'm just kidding. Uh, what are some big mistakes that we've seen interns make? I think as a society, we could just learn from each other, right? Everybody's made mistakes that we can learn from. For example, I think a big one could be practice your commute beforehand. You don't want to walk in day one with Starbucks and, and be late on the on the job. Uh, what are some big mistakes we've seen? And, you know, I think everybody might have some, but Annie, if you want to start, we'd love to hear from you. Sure. I think the biggest one that I've seen in incoming interns make is just procrastination. We understand, or I understand, we've all been in the shoes of being in school. You guys have a lot going on. So on top of trying to prepare for your internship, you have your schoolwork, you're doing exams, you might work as well. Um, but procrastination time and time again, gets interns in a pickle right before where they're asking a ton of questions last minute um, and it can be stressful. Um, for Lumen, we hire our interns about seven months prior to the program starting. So in that time frame, we are um, providing optional prep calls. Um, for example, hired our interns in October, November, we've had three prep calls. So that's three hours over the course of seven months that we've asked for um, that we send out recordings after, but we wanna make sure that you feel confident on day one, that you are connecting with your manager, that we're providing all of the details and all the information that goes into the pre-boarding and onboarding process. Um, so don't put those to the side, make the time. I know we all can make time um, to, to at least um, understand what's expected of you during that process. And you all, you have a de you have dedicated teams here to serve you as well. So if an, if an intern emails me, I respond immediately. I wanna make sure you guys feel comfortable um, and all set for day one. So that would be my suggestion um, is to not procrastinate and to take every opportunity um, to make sure you're prepared for that first day. For sure. And anybody else have any other mistakes that they kind of want to warn us about? I think one that I would add is just, I think some people go into their internship just going through the motions. It's something that they can put on their resume and um, kind of coast. And I feel like 
preparing yourself ahead of time for your internship is so underrated. Like a lot of the points that Annie made were so great. And so just think through what can you do to make your internship the best opportunity possible and make a list of goals or um, things that you want to accomplish before starting so that you're super intentional during your internship and can make a really good impression and meet those have those great relationships and meet those people so that hopefully you can start full time afterwards. Um, so don't just view your internship as something you can kind of check the box on or like put on your resume. This is really an opportunity to kind of take the next step in your career to get where you ultimately want to be. And so this preparation time is super important. I know I'm not giving like a specific example, but just really more, I guess, honing in on the point of like figuring out how you can make that impact during your internship. Yeah, Alexandra, we'll, we'll finish off with you. Yeah, um, I don't want to be repetitive. So I just to quickly um, close out, I would say you have the contacts. So if you're unable to attend any of these calls or you're not receiving the information that you think you might be receiving, just reach out to us and to the persons that are helping you on board to your company. Um, we'll be more than happy to provide to you that information. So you are ready to go when you join. Um, we want you to be ready. We put the effort already, but we also keep connecting with you throughout and we want you to have a great experience. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Um, now that we know what and how to prepare before we step in the door for the internship, I'm going to kick it back over to Jade and she's going to teach everybody how to crush their internships this summer. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Okay. So the biggest question of the day is how do you make the best out of your internship to become America's next top intern? Starting with you, Hannah, one of the first few people an intern will meet is their manager. What are some good communication and professionalism best practices to keep in mind when interacting with them? Yeah, so I think the first couple of people that you'll interact with um, are the people in your onboarding, um, whenever you first start, your recruiter, people from the recruiting team in general, and then you'll get introduced to your, at EY, your, we call them your engagement team, so the people that you're going to be working with on a day-to-day -day basis. And our EY interns have visibility to staff, seniors, managers, and partners. I know ranks differ from company to company, but that's kind of how ours is structured um, while you're on your engagement teams. And so most interns get the opportunity to talk to all of those different ranks during the span of their internship, which I think is really good experience and a really good opportunity. Um, and I think it's super important that interns connect with all those different members um, so that they can get to know them, understand the team dynamics um, and all of those good things. Um, but asking questions like we've been saying is so important. There's never a silly question. Um, it's important to get real time feedback, build upon all of these relationships. But, um, you know, it's important to figure out who to go to for questions and who to go to for like day to day tasks and checking in on those things. So I think a good best practice would be to set up meetings with the members of your team that have those seniority roles so that you can set expectations on the front end around communication and just what they'll need from you. So you can figure out during that meeting how often you should be communicating, how often you should be reporting to them, um, what you should be reporting to them, what they'll need from you, how often, all of those good things. So that's what I would mention. Yes. Hannah, I mean, Alexandra, Annie, any other thoughts on that? I just would add one more thing about communication in particular with your manager. A lot of time, I mean, I know most companies have you know, your email. They have like a system of like chat style. I am um, understanding what needs to be placed where, <laughs> um, especially when you're dealing with managers. Um, most managers have back-to-back -back calls all day. They're managing the team. So you're not the only one that they um, have to connect with for one-on-ones, for example. Um, they're very busy. So um, if it's a quick, short, you're wanting a quick answer, that would be appropriate for an IM. If it's something, anything more than a quick one to two sentences, that should be email so they can go back to it. Um, another thing that I was going to mention is the importance of, and I am speaking to um, talent in the industry that are not used to picking up the phone. I am very old school. If I don't understand something, I will schedule time. I will talk through it. If you are sitting there reading a request from a manager 
and you have any hesitation on the ask, the expectations, the goals, the outcomes, and I encourage you to set set up dedicated time to talk through that instead of trying to go back and back back and forth via email. So that would be my one guidance is don't be afraid of the phone. The phone can be good. Hey, great. So Alexandra, Annie just mentioned this, but what are one or one, what are one-on-ones and how to best use that time with your manager as an intern? Yes. So one-on-ones is when you're having um, potentially a majority of the time schedule time with your manager on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. It can also be with any of your teammates, as Hannah mentioned, um, to have just uh, conversations with them. And it can be related to what we talk about, about statement of work, just quick tag ups, conversations to understand expectations or if you're partnering with them to get some work from them. Um, it's just having that quick 30 minute conversation or one hour conversation and a recurrence um, throughout your internship. And the best way to, I know this is gonna sound silly, but it's just always be prepared for those questions ahead of time. And if there is a need to send pre-reads because there is expectations to talk about any of your projects or something that you wanna have a meaningful conversation in a short period of time, it's the best way to just be prepared. Um, so, I would say my biggest recommendation, because we've talked about this pretty much, we've covered it all, it's to be prepared with the questions and what are your expectations to get out of that call. So you're ensuring that you talk all the topics, um, that you cover all of the things that you wanted to cover in that meeting so that you're ready for whatever your expectations or action items are next until your next meeting with your manager or any of your teammates. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add, but I would say those are those are my things. I have one quick thing to add about one-on-ones. You can either build your own template. You can Google one-on-one -on -one templates. Um, if you enter a company like Lumen, we have a dedicated site for one-on-ones that keeps your thoughts organ organized. Um, make sure that if you have questions throughout the week that you can go in and plug those in so you don't forget to address that with your manager. Um, but those notes are going to be critical when you get to the end of the program to look back and see the goals and expectations, questions throughout your project work, updates about your project throughout. So you can verbalize what you did in that the span of your internship. So I just wanted to mention that as well. It's a great recap um, to really put your thoughts onto paper to include on your resume or maybe a potential readout at the end of the program. And I love that you mentioned organization because I feel like being organized in your internship is key to being successful. So Hannah, kicking it off to you, what are some organization tools slash tips and tricks have you seen interns or employees use to stay organized? Oh man, I feel like there's so many. Um, I feel like each company has different sort of technologies to help you be successful in this area. So I feel like really taking a good look each week at your calendar to note when you have calls, um, who you need to schedule additional calls with, really utilizing your outlook as much as you can um, so that your calls are all successful. You really hone in on the agendas for each of those. Like I know Annie mentioned, they have agenda template so that you can use your time efficiently. Um, so just setting those up ahead of time is really, really thoughtful and good. I think also um, utilizing other programs, you know, whether it's OneNote or, um, you know, some sort of notes tool, I think is really helpful where you can have multiple tabs about multiple projects and just really put all of your notes in there. Um, and then I feel like those are the main things. Those are really old school, Outlook and OneNote, but I feel like those can really help keep you on track. And I mean, you live by your calendar, I feel like. So I feel like Outlook is really, really important. Hey, Annie, Alexandra, any other tools or just platforms that you've seen people use or even ones that you use to stay organized? Nothing really additional. OneNote is huge. Um, and then really utilizing the company system. So like we use success factors um, to input and to track all of that, so. Yeah, and I would say just a quick tip, it's to use what works for you. Like the company might offer several tools out there and sometimes they um, are really cool, but all, might also be time consuming. So you just have to figure out what works for you best and for your statement of work and just for your personal 
um, feel like what it's something that will help you keep organized during your internship. But we also use OneNote a lot. <laughs> That's my holy grace there. <laughs> I definitely agree. I know, I know Notion is a really big thing. I've seen a lot of people use Notion for just about everything. And then I know personally, when I was an intern, I, I kept it old school. I had pen and paper, but in my reality, it was an iPad and my pe Apple pencil, but I just like wrote down every single thing for every meeting. I made sure to write down things that I wanted to touch on with my manager or whenever I had coffee chats or one-on-ones, I'm always like every person I met, I wrote down notes on our conversation so I can always go back and reference that. So now let's dive into ways that interns can come off professional and courteous. Um, Annie, let's kick it off. Let's start with you. Sure. I think one of the most important things I've learned here at Lumen is the philosophy of be here now. Um, it is very easy. I can hear my phone dinging like crazy right now because my little kid is in a concert, but I am not looking at it because I'm engaged in speaking to all of you. You have the power to flip a phone around, put it away. It is very noticeable if you're on a call and you're like this the whole time, you know what you're doing. Um, so I think it just got, I mean, we all know what it means to be courteous, to be focused, to be engaged with who you're with and encourage each of you because we live in a world that I know uh, social media is a huge thing of, okay, I'm working a little bit. I'm going to go like, take a look at this. It's very easy for us to shift focus because we, we've, we've learned how we were raised in that kind of mindset mind space really. Um, so you have the power to flip it around, to be engaged and present with your work team and with your work project. So I encourage you to be present in that way. And also to add on to that, so um, in terms of being engaged, what are some like tips that you guys have for rules of engagement? Like, like how do you know when to respond to a message? Like how can you determine the level of urgency or just like the best times to communicate to people when you're on the clock? Um, uh, can you repeat it one more time, Jade? Sorry. Just yeah. My what are some rules of engagement for, you know, staying engaged and just communicating with your team when you're on the clock? Yeah. So I think, I mean, it kind of goes back to the mentality of like the one-on-one, -on -one. take notes, ask questions, um, be mindful around if you're getting feedback to not interrupt, to be engaged in this is a learning opportunity for you. I know I have been in the seat of getting like constructive feedback um, and, and sometimes it can be hard to do that, but knowing that that is an opportunity to grow you both professionally and personally um, can make a huge impact on how, how you move throughout your career. Um, so those would be a, a couple of, of tips I would say around that. Great. And I know we talked about it before, but making mistakes at work is totally normal. So what are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen interns make on the job? Alexandra, let's start with you. Um, yeah, so uh, I would say one of the biggest ones, just following along Annie's note, is um, taking in feedback and criticism and asking for feedback on time. That is key. Don't shy away for, from going to your manager or your teammates and or your network mentors and asking for feedback about your work or how you are communicating with your team or partnering with them because great positive feedback, it's great. And negative feedback, it's great too. That's how I see it. It's important for you to grow in your career, to grow as a person. So that's certainly something that, you know, you want to be prepared for and going along the line that we were just talking about, about being courteous and professional. If something, um, if one of your feedbacks, if, if that feedback, you just don't know what to follow up with, how to answer, how to react to it, feel free to just stick, take a step away back and just take your time to reflect on it and then come back to whoever that person was and ask for follow-up questions on that. Um, I would say uh, another one is don't shy away from big challenges. There were tasks that you might not feel you have the skill set. If that is assigned to you, it's because they believe that you can do it. So just ask for help and ask for questions and um, take on the task 
I know that, you know, it's sometimes a scary, but it's there for you and it's an opportunity for you to grow in your internship and in your career. So that's it for me. I'll pass it over to someone else. <laughs> I'll add one thing to this um, that I've seen a couple of times. I've been with Lumen for four years. I've only seen it twice. Um, but the biggest mistake I've seen is not speaking up. If it's something to do with your work team or maybe your work project, maybe you're not getting that hands-on um, catered experience from your manager, um, which like I mentioned earlier, these some, sometimes these managers are director level, they are very busy, they're pulled in a lot of different directions. If you feel you are not getting the attention that you deserve as an intern and as an employee of that company, I implore you to speak up. I am dedicated to hiring, program planning, making sure our interns have the best experience ever. Um, so the fact that the two situations I've been in where it got to week nine or 10 and the intern finally came to me saying, I've only met with my manager, you know, a handful of times. I don't feel like I've, I've contributed it like I should have. I, I wish he would have come to me at week two so I could make the adjustments necessary to ensure that that individual had the best experience ever. That's what we're here for. And that's what we want for you. I can piggyback off of that a little bit in a different way. Um, in addition to speaking up on your own behalf, I think something else that we can see quite often is just the lack of questions that interns ask. Um, I don't know if it's because they're fearful of, you know, how they're perceived or interrupting someone who they're working with, or they think their questions are silly, um, but your questions are not silly. Um, you're here for a reason. You were hired into the company and we want you there. Um, if you aren't understanding something or you have a question pertaining to a specific task that you've been assigned to, don't wait hours to ask it. Don't just sit there and stew. It could hurt the timeline of the project. Um, it could impact your performance review or your performance feedback. Um, and we don't want that. We um, encourage our interns to go to their peer buddy or someone you know, with a less seniority level than like a manager or something so that they have the capacity to answer all of these questions of our interns um, so that we can best cater and serve them. We're expecting you to ask a lot of questions. And so we're prepared, we're ready. We're just waiting for you to speak up um, on your own behalf. So don't be scared to go to someone for help if you need it because it could have repercussions in the project and your performance and all of those things later on. I love that. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Sean to talk about how to build meaningful relationships as an intern. Thanks so much, Jade. This has been awesome so far. I'm, I feel like I'm getting really good in, information as well. You know, this, this stuff does go further than just an internship, but um, I think it's a good time to start talking about, you know, connections at work, relationships at work, and building off of those that can become, you know, lev uh, everlasting professional relationships. Um, so what are some advice for building the best relationships possible in the office through other interns, coworkers, or managers? Like we spoke about building a good relationship with your manager that can kind of turn into a, a lasting professional connection. Um, Annie, I'd love to hear from you to start. Yeah, so relationship building in the workplace is critical for your experience, for um, your growth even. Um, I know re relationships that I have made have opened up job opportunities to me in the past. Um, so like I have mentioned before, majority of companies, if not all, have dedicated teams for their internship programs. Um, I mentioned, again, I mentioned this previously, but like my goal and my job is to make sure that I am providing our interns over the summer internship program an experience that will help um, guide them and grow them professionally. Um, to help assist in that network with other interns, with other people within the company. Um, I know we'll probably get into this in a minute too, but employee resource groups within companies are a great way to explore, to meet new people, to have a seat at the table, your voice be heard. Um, again, this can be from both a professional standpoint and a personal standpoint. I always mention to candidates, when you think about I'm going to use this as an example, but I'm a mom. Um, I spend my work day, you know, eight to 
4 or 5 p.m. My kids are at school. They go to aftercare. They get home. I feed them dinner. It's bath bed. I'm with my coworkers more than my kids during the sun hours. So um, it is important to make sure that you have a network of people surrounding you that are gonna help you grow and be the best you can be at work. Um, so I would encourage you all to take the opportunity um, to participate over the summer. There's gonna be activities um, allotted to you. There'll be professional development courses. Um, again, these are all optional, but what you put in is what you're gonna get out of your experience. So that's what I would encourage you to leave with today is what you put in, you will get out. Um, and it's a great way to really build your network as you enter the workforce after graduation. Such a good piece of advice. And fun fact for me, my current manager is the person who hired me for my first internship all those years back. So it's just kind of living proof, you know, if you make the right connections and you work well with somebody, it can benefit you down the road. Um, but I think you just touched on something that's super important. And I think a lot of interns, especially in your first time around, you're not sure how to get yourself involved, but I think interns can really benefit from trying to stand out as much as possible. And I think joining company events or becoming what I like to call a culture addition is a great way to set yourself apart from competition and also just add more value to your own internship experience. Um, Hannah, I'd love to hear about what kind of events your company offers for interns and how you've seen interns get involved. Yeah, so I feel at EY, we do have intern specific events and all of our interns and potential interns should definitely consider attending all of those. Um, while your internship may be hard work, it should also be really fun. Um, the recruiting team will help plan, I mean, happy hours, activities, social events um, for interns to really get to know each other because you are a little cohort and you're all going through the same things together. So it's good for you guys to get to know each other because hopefully eventually you will all be a starting class for when you convert to full-time and start as full-time employees. Um, but we have typically, I think like four to five social events throughout the span of the internship. And that could be top golf, bowling, sporting events, um, I mean, it really ranges through lots of different things. Um, we also put on in-office lunch and learns um, where we pick specific subject matters and you have those experts come in and um, talk about all of those things. So there can be really interesting topics like there's technology or certain initiatives EY is putting on. Um, there's networking events that we schedule with partners. So hire up managers at our firm. So you can really have like some good one-on-one -on -one experience with partners, which you don't really get that sort of face time that often with them. Um, so that's a really good experience for our interns to have um, and just relational relationship building, excuse me. Um, and then the recruiting team, you know, you should be really good friends with your recruiter by the end of your internship. Staying close to them, I think it's really important just to like talk to them about your experience, what's going on, um, what you're loving, and, you know, just making sure that you're staying in touch with them. That's awesome. I think, um, like I said, I, it's the best way to kind of bond outside of just the day-to-day -day work. And, you know, Annie, you mentioned just the amount of time you're actually spending with these people. So it's nice to actually build these connections just to make the internship a little bit funner too. Um, aside from just building connections and building friendships, um, I think it's important to find a mentor at work. And I know it's not always easy. Um, I think a good question that we could start off with here is, are mentors assigned on the job? Um, it might be different by company, or is there a creative way that an intern can kind of find the best mentor for them? And what's the kind of tips for finding a right mentor? Um, Alexandra, I'd love to start with you, but I think it's something that we would like to hear from everybody on. Sure. So um, at, at Boeing, we, again, as I mentioned earlier in the call, we do encourage our managers to assign that, what we call an intern buddy, which is essential, that first mentor that you have that will directly be related to your statement of work and team experience. And that is the person that you can go ask to help you build the rest of your network. Um, they're there for you, they're assigned to you. We also have business resource groups, such as Annie mentioned, that do offer mentoring events, which are open for everyone to attend. And you can go there to meet new people, but as well find yourself 
mentors and how to start that first interaction. It is, I think, a different journey for everyone. And even for myself, um, it was hard at the beginning when, where I was an intern because you're essentially asking someone very professionally to mentor you throughout your internship, but then also build that meaningful con meaningful connection after you leave. So feel free to reach out to those people that maybe go into your meetings or you attend intern events and they have some sort of, um, you have some sort of connection with them or interest um, because of their work or um, external work that they might do at the company, part of the business resource groups, and just reach out to them and let them know that you are interested in connecting with them. And once you make that connection, um, reach out to them and let them know that you're interested in that mentor opportunity. It is, and it, it sounds scary, but it, it's, um, it's just a simple email away. And it's something that certainly um, at Boeing, we do offer several intern events that are um, per site, um, through the business resource groups to do that mentoring offerings for the interns, but as your managers, as your team, and uh, feel free to ask them, can you be my mentor during the summer? And then one of the most important things is to just build that meaningful relationships with them. Mentors are not only there professionally, they're also there for your like for your personal development, and they're there to see your career growth, and they're they're there to help you. Um, build your professional career. And if it's with their team, if it's outside of their team, if it's outside of the organization, which is not what we want, right? But it might happen. Um, that mentor will be there to help you navigate through that journey in your first early career um, experiences. So I'll leave it there and I'll pass it over to anyone else who wants to add more. I feel like I would be repeating. Yeah, sorry, I'd be repeating. Anna, anything you want to add? You don't, you know, I'll just, yeah, I'll mention one thing. I feel like there can be layers to mentorship. I think it's good to have different ranks of people around you um, so that you can be supported through all different types of situations going on in your career. So I know that Alexander mentioned you are assigned like a buddy. It's the same thing at EY. You're assigned a peer buddy and that person is closest to you in rank. They're not an intern, but they're like a staff or a senior. So they know exactly what you're going through. You can ask them, where's the printer? And they'd be like, oh, it's down there. They don't care. They're fine answering small questions like that. But then it's good to have someone who's a little bit more upwards in rank as like a counselor, someone who can speak into your performance, can really help provide feedback and those sorts of more formal interactions with you. And then I view a mentor almost as someone who like is even more high up above me. And my person isn't even in, I'm in recruiting HR and they're not even in recruiting or HR. They're in a different function of the firm and they really speak into the overall aspect of my career and all these aspirations that I want and goals that I have. So you can view this topic as something that has layers. The people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis like your peer buddies and then counselors and mentors, it can really grow and can grow throughout your career. So just wanted to add that tidbit. Great point. Um, I know we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but ERGs, what are they and are interns welcome? Um, Annie, if you could just kind of touch on it again. Yeah. So we introduce our employee resource groups here at Lumen. We offer 11 um, groups. Um, we um, introduce them early on in the program. So our interns have the opportunity to join them, um, be a part of those round tables, fireside chats, um, get connected with other people within the company that I had mentioned earlier. Um, but they are a absolute great resource to meet people. Um, it's also a great resource to learn more about the company, the company culture. Is this a place you want to work for? Um, I always like to say internships are a glorified interview. Um, we have 10 weeks to, you know, to judge your performance, to make sure that you align with the goals and um, expectations and priorities of the company. You guys get to do the same thing for 10 weeks. You get to interview the company, make sure that we're a good fit for you. Um, and I think this is a great way to really um, understand what that company's culture and priority from a diversity perspective might be. Um, so I definitely encourage you to, to um, join these, these type of um, resources within the company. 
I think that's very helpful for interns to know off the bat that they can join things like this. Um, I want to thank you guys for this this part, and I'm going to transition back to Jade, who's going to cover the uh, end of the internship and how you could stay successful post-internship. Hey, thank you, Sean. Okay, so they've reached the end of their internship. They spent the past few weeks soaking in information, contributing to their teams, and networking with their peers and colleagues. What are some of the best ways to end their internship and move forward? Alexandra, I'd love to start with you. What are some really good ways for interns to say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, so um, one of the things is sending thank you notes and mm -hmm. ensuring that you're sharing that final contact information with the people that you connected throughout your internship. Um, so sharing your socials and sharing your contact information because you want to make sure that you stay connected with them, either if you return to their team or you return to the rest of the organization, again, building meaningful relationships. So I'm um, sending those thank you notes, ask them to stay connected. Um, if after the internship, ask them just to like set up a recurrence meeting from your personal email and connect with them on, on a monthly quarter base, whatever it is that works for you make sure to, um, to take that quick action. It's very small, but it's certainly important and build your contact list. Some people, um, might tell you, you know, my best way to contact me, it's through my personal phone or through my work phone or through these emails. So just ensuring you have that list of contacts, um, you know, to connect with them further on while you go back to school. Okay. So Annie, now that they've said goodbye, how do you recommend they talk about their internships on their resume or externally with others? Yes, this is one of the most important things that you should do at the end of your internship is understand how to present that information, present your findings, what you did, how you did it, outcomes, and how those outcomes relate it to the goals at the onset of your internship. My biggest point of advice, uh, I have a couple points of advice, but one, look back at those one-on-one -on -one notes. Make sure you make note of achievements throughout so you can highlight those at the end. Talk to your manager, talk to your work team peers, and, and present to them like, hey, I wanna refresh my resume to capture what I completed here. Does this do it? Get, get feedback from people. I've had interns come to me with their resume to say, hey, can you review this and just make sure it's in line? I'm a recruiter. I don't know anything about like what a software developer truly does, but I am happy to like look at that, um, give suggestions on content flow. Um, I definitely encourage you to ask your peers to do the same for you, because those are the drivers that are going to kick off your career, whether that be in-house with the company you interned at, or if you decide to go elsewhere, if an opportunity isn't allotted to you, because um, that's what we're looking at, right? That's what the recruiters um, for those full-time roles are looking at, that internship experience. What you did, does that project work align with the project and the job that we're hiring for? So, so critical. Ask your manager, ask layer leaders above them with the approval of the manager, of course, but they've done this. They know kind of that storytelling, um, have, have the, um, ha they've done the legwork for themselves prior. So they're gonna have great insight for you on how you need to share out that information to others. I love that. So Hannah, what if you were not successful with your internship or it wasn't a good fit? Where do you go from there? Yeah, um, so I think being open to listen and receive feedback on your performance is important. So it gives you a better understanding of maybe what happened or why the internship may not have been as successful. And this typically happens during an exit interview at EY and hopefully, um, you know, prior to this exit interview, um, this doesn't come as a complete surprise, I guess. As, I don't know if that's a great way to put it, but we have these midpoint check-ins um, throughout your internship about where we talk through your performance with the intern and the manager. They have 
one-on-one -on -one discussions multiple times. And so we talk through how they're performing, what they could be improving on, um, what we see going really, really well. And so hopefully, you know, through those conversations and maybe through this exit interview, you can take away some key points of maybe what you can improve on the next time. And if it wasn't a fit, um, I think taking some time to self-reflect on why, like did the company may not have those professional networks or ERGs that you were really hoping for to get plugged in on, or did you just not enjoy the work that you were doing? What did you not like? Um, and I think also you could potentially chat with your recruiter to try to connect some of the dots on some of these things too. They'll have some good context as well, just to help you have like sort of more of a frame of reference for all of this. And then where do you go from there? I, I mean, try again, it's always try again, right? So apply the things that you learned to your next opportunity, figure out where you wanna make those improvements and hone in on that. So continue to network, continue to put yourself out there for opportunities, um, go to recruit recruiting events, career fairs, message people on LinkedIn, all of those good things. I love that. So another commonly asked question from students is how do you address next steps with your manager, especially when talking about return offers for another internship or even a full-time role at the company? Alexandra, I'd love to start with you. Yes. So here at Boeing, um, I think we we all, it's kind of a little bit of standard of our conversation here, but we do offer that, um, encourage managers to have that mid-performance conversation with their interns. And that's where the conversation comes in of whether they're interested in returning either to their teams or to another teams, or maybe they're just not interesting in returning to the organization for whatever reason, because maybe we do not offer what their career aspirations look like. So my biggest advice is to be very vocal and speak up of the opportunities that you're wanting to get out of your next internship or out of that full-time experience when you return to the, to the organization. So um, ensuring that you express interest in returning to the company, to the organization, use that network that we've talked about to, um, understand whether you're wanting to go into another function or another experience or another team, another location, be very vocal about that. Use that 10 weeks, 12 weeks of internship to draw down what are your career aspirations within the organization and speak up about them. Um, it's, it's very important that your managers knows that because when you go back to your school, they're the ones who will be speaking up in your behalf and will be having those conversations with the other rest of the people, the other rest of the team. So they ensure that you um, convert back to the organization as a full time or as a next internship. So we try our best to convert um, our interns to either full times or next internships because we want to make sure that you have a great experience. So even reach out to us, um, as Annie has mentioned. So certainly be very vocal about that, speak up um, and build that uh, connection throughout your internship. Okay, yes. Annie, Hannah, any other thoughts? How is it like at your company? Yeah, um, so with the conversion talk, that is the number one goal of Lumen's internship program and something we do on the onset of hiring our interns is understanding the business's needs and long-term goals. So we want the commitment from the business Obviously, it's based on graduation date. It's based on that performance as well. But we we capture that commitment at time of hire um, because Lumen views our internship program as the best way to get the top, latest and greatest early career talent into our company. And it, it's 100% accurate. Um, so Lumen, very similar to what Alexandra was saying, um, we do mid um, midsummer performance review. So the manager has to complete a lengthy performance review on that intern um, as long along with um, uh, their recommendation for hire. Um, once we capture that information, that's when we work with the business to say, okay, this person is graduating in December of 23. They were a top performer. Um, let's, let's create a position for them and convert them to full-time after graduation. We have had, had very great success in the past. Last year, we um, converted 80% of our interns to full-time after graduation. So it's always really fun for 
my team who does the hiring, who put so much effort into the program planning and making sure that our interns have that excellent experience um, to see them join full time um, after the internship. Uh, I think, I guess my, my tip would be, be transparent with your manager, be vocal about your interest in converting to full time. Um, that will help your case um, when they go to that performance review as well to ensure that they can get you into a full-time capacity if it is there. Okay. Hannah, do you have any thoughts? I feel like it would be repetitive. I feel like I'm very on point with both Alexandra and Amy's comments. So nothing new to add. Okay, so before we hop into Q&A, another big question is, what are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen interns make before leaving or after leaving? Um, Hannah, I guess we'll start with you. I feel like what I'm about to say might be a little bit repetitive, but I think two things are not staying connected. So I know we've recently talked about this, but you should keep up those relationships that you made during the internship. Stay connected to your intern friends. Stay connected to all of the managers and staff that you worked with on your engagement teams, connect with them on LinkedIn, like we talked about, email them every now and then while you're back in school, check in on things. How are things going? I can't wait to come back now that I have my full-time offer. You know, I'm really looking forward to next, next August when I come back full-time. Can't wait to work on XYZ clients with you guys. So um, it's really, it does have this personal touch if you check in with them every now and then, because um, these are the people that would be in your day-to-day -day once you start full-time and so keep building those relationships because they will serve you well once you come back and you have like some good foot or footing a good place to keep going um and then the other thing that we do at EY, which I love, is promoting your um, firm on campus. So we call them campus ambassadors. So once you intern with us and you receive a full-time offer, you become a campus ambassador and um, you get to, you know, pair up with your recruiter and help, you know, wear EY swag on campus or go to events and talk to um, potential interns that want to, you know, be at EY the next summer or the next winter, whatever it is. And so get with your recruiter and see how you can help because you are the, you are closest in age to those new potential interns that will be coming through the next stage of recruiting. And so it's always really fun and helpful when we get to involve um, our interns that we just had with us. I have one thing to add to this. Um, I'm not sure I would call it a mistake, but it's just um, something I've seen interns not be aware of is the big picture. I've been in this, in the workforce for over a decade now. So, and I have seen and understand because I work in this space, the job market. Um, Recently, I've had four interns who declined an offer based on compensation um, have come back saying they were recently rescinded their or not rescinded their offer. They were rift. They were let go from the company. So my my biggest thing is look at the look at the big picture. Does the company that you're going to work full time for have a good moral and ethical background? Do they meet your values? Do they have um, true work-life balance? There are a lot of things that money, that paycheck won't bring you happiness in the end because it, the company doesn't align with what, what, you, what you value and what you uphold. Um, so that would be my biggest thing, especially in a job market that I think is normalizing a little bit now. Um, it can be very easy to say, oh yeah, I'm going to take the, the, the paycheck. And then when they get there, they're not happy. So look at the big picture of that company, its culture, its people, its work, and make sure it aligns with what you want for your future and goals. Because there are the opportunities that you can climb and get to where you want it to be anyway, and be happy doing it. Thank you. Hey, Grace, I guess now it's time to hop into Q&A. We have a few questions that came in. Um, one question that was talked about earlier when it came to like accepting and declining offers, what is the most professional way to buy time when deciding between internship offers? What should students do when a more preferred position has not sent an acceptance or rejection email back to you? Anyone can take a stab at this. 
I, I'll go ahead and start. A transparency is key. Um, and I had stated this in the first, first section of this session, the importance of when I'm working with a candidate, I want what's best for you. If you're not aligned to the work that is being presented, be transparent about that. Let's go back to the manager and say, hey, I'm, I'm a little off on this portion of it. Like, is there something that we can do to work for that? Or, hey, I have another offer on the table and we're not, maybe we're not at that point yet in our recruitment process. Be transparent there. I, I have been in situations where I'm like, I have the best candidate and I don't want to lose out. And I will go fight for that candidate to the manager and say, hey, I know you have interviews scheduled. we if you want to move on this person, we got to move. Um, so the recruitment team, the university relations team, whoever is working with you on during the hiring process is there to advocate for you. So transparency is always key um, to getting the best results for you. And I think a tangible way to do that is to let your recruiter know your offer deadlines with the firms that you're recruiting at. So, hey, I'm really interested in your firm, but I have this offer that I need to get back to them by, you know, by, you know, next week or something. So you may be in a different part of the recruiting process, like Annie mentioned. And so they will expedite the process for you so that they can figure out what is best for you and what they can do to help you in that situation. So just a tangible thing that you can sort of relay to your recruiter to kind of get you on that even playing field. Yeah. The only thing I will add is be thoughtful of when you take um, different offers and potentially you accept more than one, um, you're taking away not only um, a, a role in the organization and holding that back, but also you're taking that experience from other person that might be benefit, that needs, might be benefit, might benefit from, from that internship experience. So if you know that you're not interested I, I think we cannot stress enough, um, but transparency is key for everything. And just let us know, communicate with us. We want the best for you, want the best for the organization, and we'll work with you to help you achieve your career, goal, career goals. Okay, so I, really, I, I definitely agree. Um, another question is, that came in, especially for students who, you know, they've either never done an internship before or they just don't have much work experience. What job searching strategies and tips would you give to them to help them find that first internship? I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, one thing that I have guided students who have contacted me who are interested in a role and they don't have that experience level I always tell them, you're working on projects in school. I know you are. You're, you're learning things. Highlight those things. If you haven't had an internship, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that you can do personally um, to show on your resume as well. Personal work projects. Um, I work a, a lot with, I'm from Lumens, technology company. So a lot of the um, interns that I'm hiring are highly technical individuals who a lot of what they've done come from, they've done it themselves. It wasn't through an internship. And those are the things that have driven me to get them in front of a hiring manager, um, highlighting those skills that are on the job description, refer back to that and kind of edit your resume to fit the job you're applying for. To be honestly, though, don't, don't, don't put something off that isn't true because that's going to bite you in the long run too when you're in the role. Um, but you can adjust your resume to fit the role to stand out more to the recruiter and get to that hiring manager. And one other thing I would add is in addition to project experience and things you're learning in the classroom is organizations that you're involved in on campus. So at EY, we always say, we don't want to see you involved in 15 different organizations and just be a member. We would rather you dig deep and be involved in a few, a handful, but like go for leadership positions or chair positions or things like that, committee positions, um, so that you have sort of leadership skill experience that you can refer to in your interviews, um, you know, that could be leadership skills, that could be project management skills. Um, there's so many different things 
um, that you can glean on from being involved in these organizations that can supplement your project work in school. That can help you if you've never had an internship before because all of these things that you're involved in are helpful as well. The only last thing I'll add is something I recommend is to I search about the organization, but also search in that organization how roles of your interests look like. Look at those entry-level job descriptions of whatever your interest role is and try to tailor your career, like your aspirations, your organizations, your projects. Um, how, do, how can you transfer those skills, those tasks, those things that you did into that experience in your resume that can help you align to that job role that you're interested in applying, whether it's an internship or a full-time role. So that's the only thing I'll add here. Okay. So another great question is, is it too late to find an internship for the summer? And if so, do you guys have any un advice on the best times to start looking for a summer internship? No, I keep kicking off the QA, Hannah, Andrew, please jump in um, first if you'd like. Um, Lumen recruits in the fall. So we open up position. We're working with the business in September. Um, end of September, October, we open up all of our positions. We end all hiring efforts by mid-December. So our summer 2023 interns start in two weeks. We hired them back in October, November, December of 2022. Um, I know that is not the same for all companies, but majority of companies that I have interact it with, do fall-based hiring for if they only offer time timeline-based programs like Lumen does, which we are only summer, June through August for a 10-week program. Um, so we are currently filled. Um, cannot wait in for next Friday for the interns to start with us, but we will be opening up, opening up for summer 2024 this September if you're interested. Um, I feel like we have a good groove going, Annie, so keep kicking off if, you're, if you want to. Um, I would say check with your career services center. For EY specifically, our interns start, our summer interns will start the week of June 12th. So similar to what Annie mentioned, we've kind of closed our hiring for summer 2023 interns, but we do open up um, our recruiting again in the fall for um positions and then we also close that in like December and then we open up again in the spring um, to recruit for more positions as well. So I think just check with your career services center. Typically there's like a job board that you can look at to see what positions are remaining. Um, those would be really good resources for you to look at. Um, at EY we do summer and winter internships. So summer is typically June to August. And then our winter, is, it should be called spring. I don't know why it's called winter, but winter is typically like January timeframe to about March. So those are the two internship opportunities we have. And then we also have staff, but that's what ours looks like. Yes. Yeah, so here at Boeing, we do um, summer internships and we do open the recruiting in fall. Um, usually our job requisitions open around August and we do visit, um, and I've I'm gonna make the assumption that other organizations do these as well. Um, we do campus recruitment as well. So make sure to attend those and um, connect with the people that are attending your campus to learn about the experiences. But we do do fall recruiting and we also do open for a very short period of time, um, spring recruiting for summer interns, uh, for summer internship opportunities. So um, our internship, uh, program already started back in May 12th, and it's been um, an amazing two weeks and we continue to receive interns on till July, but we do open in fall. And the best way to um, connect with the companies, I would say it's sign up to their career sites. I know it sounds repetitive and I know you've heard this, but make sure to sign up to the career sites for whatever companies you're interested in. and turn on notifications for when requisitions open with whatever job keywords you have, because then you're the first to know um, when these requisitions open, so you can apply and get um, your resume ready to go by fall season and apply to these companies that you're interested in and you're on the go searching for internships. Um, so if you are still looking for an internship, my recommendation on a personal note is um, 
You can maybe search if you're open to volunteer internships that are for a short period of time in certain organizations near where you are, um, work experiences that maybe are not necessarily in, organiza in big organizations, but are willing to give you that summer um, job, that transferable skills or be, you're able to reflect those skills into your resume. So um, job affiliations, organizations and projects as well that might do work during the summer for competitions and work like uh, that it's able to be placed into your resume. So you get more experiences during that summer and get your resume ready to go for fall. Hey, great. So another thing that candidates want to know is how do they present their resume in a way that is appealing to recruiters, especially like I've seen a few questions about like um, creating like ATS friendly resumes or just like creating that resume that's like that get to the interview. Any advice there? Um, yeah, I and I mentioned it earlier, but make sure you're reading through that job description and adjusting your resume accordingly. Absolutely, we have systems um, across the industry that are are make like if I go into one of my job recs and they are looking so for a specific technical skill, I'll start out by searching that to pull for and that information's pulled from a resume. So if you applied to a job and you don't have that skill, you are not a good fit for this role because the manager told me that they need someone who has you know expert skill within this or intermediate within that. Um, so we absolutely leverage technology and AI to assist us in narrowing down a large candidate pool to the, to the individuals um, who best align to that role and that we want to interview. Um, so again, just the understanding um, what the job requirements and qualifications are, what they're looking for, and adjusting your resume to maybe highlight those top things. Honestly, though. I have been in situations where people have not been honest and it showed in the interview process. So be mindful of that. A couple of other things that I can add is going back again to the Career Services Center at your university, they will have templates that you can use, which these are great resources so you don't have to recreate the wheel. There's also our friend Google. There's many templates on Google um, that I've seen people download and use. Um, all the job description notes that Annie mentioned, I think are so on point and helpful. Um, a couple of other things like specifically for the resume is try to keep it to one page. I've seen some people submit like a seven page resume. We don't need it to be that detailed. That'll come out in like the interview process where we can learn more about a particular job that you had or certain things like that, but try to just keep it to one page, maybe two, um, if you have a lot of experience or skills that you wanna write down on there and then include graduation date. I think sometimes people forget to put timing and dates on their resume. And that's really what recruiters look for a lot, especially if our internships or positions are based on your graduation dates. So make sure that you're putting all the timing that you can in there. Um, and then if you're going for any sort of licensure or CPA or CFA, those types of things, try to include those on there too, so that we know if you're going to have additional schooling or things like that. I would think the last thing I would recommend, um, because Annie and Hannah are on point with the recommendations, is to avoid acronyms in your resume. We don't, you can not assume that the person who is reading your resume understand what those acronyms stand for. And if you're trying to talk about in a specific task or action or project or skill, you want to make sure that the people reading your resume understand where you're referring to because you're not there to explain it yourself. So certainly try to avoid um, adding acronyms in your resume. And the other thing is try to transfer if there is a way to create metrics or skills and build into each experience that, that it's a, a great action to take to review your resume and have a few people look at your resume prior to you submitting because um, depending on the career sites, you might have one opportunity to do that first submission um, and you're not able to edit after that's been submitted. So certainly have a couple of people give you feedback on your resume, either it's the career side, the career um, offices that probably offer as well um, services for students to take advantage of that, peers, mentors if you keep in touch, professors, et cetera, people that are able to help you and provide that feedback to you. I love that. 
So another great question that came in is, so for students or candidates who are pivoting into another industry or specialization, what are some techniques to help them stand out, especially like if they're trying to get that new role in that new career field? I'll start. We'll switch it up. So I think... I think just trying to relay your relevant experience as much as you can go off of what you have experienced, um, because all of the skills that you may have had in a previous internship that was in a different industry or at a different type of company will still be relevant. Like you're still going to use project management skills. You're still going to have communication skills that you can provide at this new opportunity. There's so many things that give you a springboard to this opportunity. You just may not have the specific industry experience, but you can relay how you know, maybe you took some or were involved in certain organizations during school. Like if it's more of a tech position, you are learning certain skills on the side or certain things like that. Just be as um, forthcoming as you can with what you're doing on the side and what you have already experienced, but don't take for granted what you have already in your back pocket from other internships and experiences that you've had, um, because those will still serve you well in any position that you go forward in in your career. One thing I will add to Hannah's note is that there is a lot of free resources to educate yourself in other skills and other areas that you might be interested in. So, and there is a lot of free resources out there online available to you either from your from your university who might offer them just available and i would say um youtube it's also a great teacher um if you find the great resources there so um take time do some research and if you have been learning about a certain new skills because you're trying to move into a different area i'm just going to randomly use from hr to communications if you've been learning certain skills and communications or taking certain classes or free certifications, add them to your resume as well and be able to use what you've learned with the past internships or past experiences and transfer them into your resume and be able to speak about them um, in the future and vocal about why are you trying to do that career change. We, again, we always try our best to help our interns. And I know this goes along to different organizations here. We want to keep you in the company. We want to convert you and have you in the company because you are top talent. And if we are, we want to support you through that change. And if you're in your internship, your company might offer resources as well. So take advantage of those. And then I'll just, there are a couple of points that I want to add. One, trust the process. If you're sitting there and you think that all of us got our first, we applied to our one internship and got it and that turned into a career opportunity, you're wrong. It, it, it is a hustle. You got to work. You got to invest in yourself, invest in, um, in the company that you're interning at. Um, That's when you get the most out of it, but trust the process. If something doesn't work out, it's probably because there was somebody else that aligned better to it. And there's going to be an even better opportunity that will align better to you and your goals and, and what you're really driving to do in the long run. Um, my second thing was going to be utilize the resources at companies. Oh my goodness. I look at Lumen and there, we have a whole oh, trainings, videos, books, anything to, you know, hone in on those, that soft skill development, hard skill development. If you're in the tech, tech background and you are not familiar with a certain platform or technology utilize those so you can you can put those on your um on your resume as you move on to another opportunity or to utilize those resources to put your best foot forward for a full-time opportunity in-house as well Um, and then lastly i was just going to say there are a lot of great templates out there to utilize but don't lose who you are don't become a bot that's what's really going to shine through in the interview process. I know time and time and again, it does with me and my candidates. Be authentic, be you, and the right thing will come to you. I, I 100% agree with all of that. So beautifully said. So we have time actually for one more question, and it's, and it's a two-part question. So it says, is it normal for students to intern for several companies? 
And how many internships is a good amount to have to ensure you're the best candidate to get a full-time offer? It's a hard one to answer because I've hired people who have had six internships. I've hired people who have had zero internships. Um, so it's, it's, again, just really hard to answer. I think it comes back to the work that the recruiter does with the business to understand what candidate they're looking for. And, and from there, it's... Uh, Experience is great. Internship experience is great. Project work experience is great. If you don't have that, these are the opportunities that are going to build that for your future. Um, so I, I'm sorry, it's just hard hard to answer that one. Um, I'll pass it to Hannah or Alexandra if you have any further guidance. I just want to add, I did, for example, I did three internships with Boeing. And the reason I did three internships with Boeing is because it aligned with also like my schoolwork, et cetera, but also because I liked the company and I knew I wanted to return. So I just kept converting until I joined full time. And there is no minimum or maximum of internships. I would just say my recommendation is ensure that they are meaningful and they aligned with your future career aspirations because you do spend a lot of time in those internships, in those organizations, in those affiliations. So you want to make sure that at the end, there is an end goal to it. So as we've talked through building and writing your career goals, ensuring those experience aligned to you, those meaningful network, all of that will help you get to that desired. The end goal is that getting that full-time position. So there is no right answer as long as it's meaningful for your career and what you're looking forward into that end goal of getting that full-time role at your desired organization. Hey, Hannah, do you have any thoughts to close this out? No really additional ones. I feel like Annie and Alexander did a great job. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending today's event. I learned a lot. I really hope you guys learned a lot as well. And thank you. So many great questions. I just have any thoughts, Sean? just want to thank everybody for being here today. And thanks to our panelists, for sure. I learned a lot as well. A lot of tips that I'll use and I still use going forward in the rest of my career, not just internships. So, you know, the things you learn today will be used, you know, tomorrow and in the future. So thanks, everybody, for joining. And like I said, make sure to nominate yourself for top 100 intern. That nomination and voting form will come out soon. So if you need that link, I'll put it in the chat one last time. But thanks again, everybody, for being here today. All right. Thank you, everyone. And feel free to connect with the recruiters on LinkedIn if you'd like. You can, they've dropped their links in the chat, but you can also feel free to search them up. All right. Bye, everyone.